Welcome to part one of the How to Become a Data Viz Superstar series. In this session, we're going to focus on self-evaluation, of being clear on where you are at in your personal journey to visualize and communicate with data, as well as where your broader team is. So it turns out there are important learnings from this that we can use to develop our efforts. Hope you enjoy. I want to start by spending some time talking about how you can evaluate your own work. So imagine this is a spectrum for communicating with data. And now we're going to start at the bottom left and work our way upwards and to the right. And this will make more sense as I add details. But generally, sophistication is increasing as we move upward, as is the benefit that you can bring to your work and your team and your organization as we move along this path. So if we're early in our analytical journey, often it starts with tables, right? We might have data that we're able to get at for the first time. And so we can start to aggregate it and then report out on that. And often that happens first in tabular form. As we increase in sophistication, we move into what I call the ugly graph stage. And this is, we've taken a big step in an awesome direction, which is we're now visualizing our data, but we may just be getting to know our tools. So we're relying on a lot of the default settings, not really thinking too much about the design of our graphs yet. And that's what really differentiates the ugly graph stage from simple graphs. So when we get into simple graphs, we are starting to get to know our tools better, and we're using that understanding to make some changes and help the graphs that we make really meet the needs of our given situation. So we might be bringing in our company branding at this point. So our graphs start to look not like something that Excel or another tool spit out, but instead look like something that our team or our organization made. We can continue stepping up our sophistication by not just showing data, but thinking about what we're trying to communicate with that data. Where do we want our audience to look? And what do we want them to see? And we start to take design steps to our graphs that help enable those things and make them clear. And then, of course, we can take things to another level when we move beyond a specific graph and start to think more holistically about how we can weave our data into an overarching narrative or story. So I'll ask you at this point to think about where you would place your own work along this spectrum. And consider, is that where you'd like it to be? Would you like to make changes there? Because it turns out there are some really concrete things that we can do to help ourselves and our teams move from one point on this path to the next. So for example, if we've been communicating mostly with tables, we can move into that ugly graph stage by starting to visualize our data make it something that others can see. We bring value in an entirely different way when we do that. We can move from ugly graphs into simple graphs. Often a big step that will bring us there is simply decluttering, undoing some of the standard things that our tools do for us. This is where we can start to bring in some of our company design and branding as well. We can move from simple graphs into good graphs by being thoughtful about how we use contrast to direct attention and the words that we start to pair with our graphs to make the takeaway or the point clear. And then we can take that further from good graphs and start weaving those into stories by applying that principle of story and narrative structure that brings the disparate data that we want to communicate together. 
Let's take a look at what an example could look like at different points along this spectrum. So here, imagine that you work for a company that does an annual corporate fundraiser. It's a combination of monetary donations and food donations that are brought together to make meals to feed those in need in the community in which your organization operates. So you track a simple metric over time, which is just the number of meals served per year. So if we're just starting off, maybe this is our first time really looking at this data and reporting out on it, we might start with a tabular view. So here I can see a decade's worth of meals, how much we've served per year. So we think about moving along that spectrum, increasing sophistication, we might graph the data. So here's the ugly graph version that looks like Excel spit it out because it did, right? No uh, additional time was taken to play with the formatting. But notice now we can see this data in a way that wasn't possible with the table. We can move from ugly graphs to simple graphs by decluttering. And notice I've also brought some branding, some design into how this graph looks and feels through simple choices like font and color and the position of elements within the graph. We can think about not just showing the data, but continuing our increasing sophistication and making a specific point with the graph we want to show. And as we continue to move along that spectrum, we can step out of the graph and consider whether this might be a scenario where it would make sense to tell a data story, which could look like this. So this year, we have an incredible opportunity ahead of us when it comes to being able to meet the needs of families in our community. Just to set the context, we started providing meals to those in need in our area a decade ago. It all started with a pilot program that turned out to be wildly successful. We formed over 40,000 meals in that very first year. So we rolled that out company-wide. And as the company grew, so did our participation. So a little bit of stagnation after that, but double down on marketing efforts so that we could make sure people were aware of this important program. And we saw things really skyrocket from there. Up until 2017, which, as you know, was a hard year for us. We had several rounds of layoffs. It was sad to see our colleagues go and also sad to see the impact it had on overall giving, not only as a result of us having a smaller employee base, but also just the uncertainty that people had for their own future with the company. We saw that stabilize in the years after that until this past year, which, as you know, was a crazy year on multiple fronts. Uh, but unfortunately, it impacted our giving as well. And it did that in a time where we know there are not fewer families in need in our community, but rather many more. So this year, we look forward and we think there's a huge opportunity here to surpass what we've done in the past and feed more families than ever before. We have some ideas on how to do this, but we want to hear yours as well so that we can prioritize and make 2021 a fantastic year by feeding our community. So that gives you an idea of what visuals can look like along different points in this path. None of these is meant to be right or wrong, right? This is simply an illustration of how our graphs look different, both for ourselves and for an analytical team, as a result of where we are at in our analytics and data visualization journey. And now I've drawn this as a straight line here just to keep things simple, but that's oversimplifying. Really, this is a winding path and it's not always so straightforward or easy to get from one point on it to the next. Sometimes you'll spend a lot of time at one point. Other times you may pretty much skip past another. You will encounter setbacks and challenges along the way. Also, one thing to be aware of, and maybe it's 
The most important thing to be aware of is we talked about where you are on the path, but also important is the context of where your broader team or organization is along this path. Because it turns out you as an individual actually can't move too far beyond where your organization is, or at least it's not a recipe for success. Right? If you imagine if your team is at the ugly graph stage, you can't start telling stories with data. There's too much of a gap there for that to work. And this can be useful as part of the self-evaluation progress. Or process because it tells us whether we should devote our time first and foremost on continuing to develop our own skills, or if that time might be better served helping bring those around us along with us.